<laughs> what is going on everybody welcome to another video on the simply car things youtube channel thank you all for joining me today we're going to be discussing the bmw n52 engine naturally aspirated three liter inline six that's found in a number of e-series bmws and even f-series cars as well with the 28i designation and today we will be discussing how you can produce more power out of your naturally aspirated inline six bmw engine and there's going to be five simple mods that we're going to be getting into relatively simple mods uh, to increase the power and produce a lot more torque and a lot more horsepower throughout the rpm band of your vehicle now before we get straight into the list, if you guys could please smash that thumbs up button, give this video a like because it'll help the algorithm reach out to a number of other people for this video. And if you could subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already, that would be immensely appreciated. Let's get into the first mod and that's gonna have to be the 330i three-stage intake manifold for your N52. The BMW N52 came in a number of different variants, and starting off in 2006, you had the 325i, which also had the N52, and it put out about 215 horsepower. And then you also had the upper trim model, which was the 330i. Now the 330i made an output of around 255 horsepower, and it definitely made more torque as well. And the biggest reason of that was actually the tri-stage intake manifold that the 330i utilized on its N52 engine. The standard N52 uses a single stage intake manifold, whereas the variant of the N52, which is found in the BMW 330i, uh, uses a tri-stage intake manifold, which has variable length intake runners. So basically, the intake manifold utilizes DISA valves, which is basically a German acronym for differential air control that can actively adjust the amount of air that's going into the combustion chamber. Therefore, it can produce more power at different points in the RPM band. So Overall, you're going to have a lot more mid-range, a lot more low-end torque, and especially if you're someone that's daily driving your car or utilizing it for uh, a purpose where you're going to be frequently in city traffic or stop and go, this is definitely going to be beneficial because you're definitely going to feel those power gains specifically. Now, the 330i intake manifold is pretty expensive because it's that tri-stage unit. It's definitely more complex. You can get one off Beamer World, but it's definitely a couple hundred bucks, and even then, you still need to get those DISA valves separately. So, if you're looking to purchase everything brand new it's definitely going to cost you a good amount of money uh, you know you're looking at well over 800 bucks or so if you're going completely brand new uh, to get the parts just to install into your n52 engine however there are many workarounds to this and the n51 which was actually a sulev vehicle in the state of california arizona delaware connecticut uh, maryland i believe as well Certain N52 variants were actually designated as the N51 uh, because of their Sulev or super ultra low emissions vehicle uh, variants because these states mandated legislation so that the manufacturer could avoid paying hefty fines that essentially a certain uh, number of these vehicles had to be sold as Sulev cars and those are designated under the N51. Now the N51 is basically an N52, but because of its Sulev emissions purpose, uh, BMW designated it specifically as the N51. And this variant actually does have the three-stage intake manifold as well. However, it is restricted simply from a matter of software tuning. Uh, so that's why it only puts out around 225 horsepower, I believe, if I remember correctly. So that's another thing. And the way that you can check, obviously, if you live in a state where uh, Sulev vehicles are mandated as part of that legislation process, it is pretty important to look to see if you have an N52 powered vehicle to check to see if you have an N51 because, well, that'll save you a lot of headache in terms of getting that intake manifold. And the way you can check is by lifting the hood, looking at the emission control sticker and seeing whether or not it's designated as a ULEV, an ultra low emissions vehicle, or as a SULEV, which is what you want, super ultra low emissions vehicle, because it's super ultra low emissions, I guess, right? So that's one route you can take with the intake manifolds. Now, some other people have experimented with actually retrofitting the N54 intake manifold onto the N52. Now, as we know, the N54 was the high performance twin turbo inline six that eventually superseded the N52 uh, from the 330i platform and became the 335i. 
And some people have fitted the N54 intake manifold as well. However, it's not a direct bolt-on swap. There is some fabrication and retrofitting that is required in order to get it to work. And on top of that, it's not gonna be as punchy in the mid-range and low end as it is with the three-stage intake manifold that you can get from the 330i or from the N51 if your vehicle is equipped with that uh, Sulev motor. I hope that brings some more context into the intake manifold situation that surrounds these cars. But let's get into the second thing that you can do to produce more power with your N52 engine. And this is gonna come in the form of a set of catless headers for your N52. Catless headers, of course, are very similar kind of in the sense to downpipes that you're basically removing the primary catalytic converters of the exhaust system of your vehicle. And of course, you wanna use this only for competition or off-road use, uh, but reducing or eliminating those catalytic converters is going to free up a lot of restriction in the exhaust system itself. It's going to reduce back pressure, it's going to increase the sound and overall exhaust flow of those exhaust gases from your N52, and therefore it's gonna just help you naturally produce more power. Now, of course, in order to fully utilize those gains, you'll want to tune, which is something that I'm gonna get into in just a bit, but those catalyst headers is definitely gonna be a must-do mod if you want to produce some pretty solid power. Now, that actually brings me into the third upgrade, which I think is definitely something that is a must-have for any N52 user, which is a performance exhaust system. And with any type of aftermarket exhaust, it's gonna be highly beneficial. Not only, of course, are you gonna continue to reduce that back pressure, but it's also gonna add a ton of driving enjoyment and fun to the vehicle because it's gonna sound so much better. An exhaust system, especially paired with those catless headers, is going to make your vehicle sound amazing, especially given that it's a three liter, naturally aspirated inline six. It's gonna have a nice volume, a nice roar to it. Uh, but in addition to that, you're also gonna be able to utilize those increased performance gains. Fourth on our list of power producing mods for the N52 comes in with our aftermarket intake setup. Now, what you can do is a charcoal filter delete. You can also get the freer flowing uh, European N52 intake system as well, or you can just straight up go with like a cold air intake or an aftermarket setup uh, that's supplied by a US manufacturer or something of that nature because pretty much any of those are going to be good. And the reason why is because the factory N52 intake is somewhat restrictive and by freeing up and opening up that intake for a more performance oriented uh, use, you are going to be able to take advantage of increased power gains. Now an intake is gonna increase the induction sound as well. It's also definitely gonna to help to draw in more air. Now some people will argue that an intake actually draws in more hot air. It's a very highly contested topic and for some people they swear by intakes and for some people they think the stock air box is great. Whatever the case is, I highly suggest that you do your own research. Uh, but I personally do believe that an intake or the charcoal filter delete or even the European uh, N52 intake, either one of any of those solutions is basically gonna help out quite a bit with producing power on your N52. And finally, the icing on the cake to wrap everything up in terms of that power production on the N52 is going to be an ECU tune. Now with that tri-stage intake manifold, with those catless headers, performance exhaust, and an intake, of course, all those things are gonna help regardless with producing power and opening up your N52 for performance, but a tune is going to basically utilize and optimize everything as best as possible so that you are maximizing the performance gains that come out of your engine. Active Auto Work makes a flash tune. Uh, BPM also makes a flash tune as well for the N52. And there are quite a bit of aftermarket tuning solutions that you can flash via a laptop through the OBD2 port of your BMW uh, to make make more power on that car. A lot of guys have dynoed at around 250 wheel horsepower or so with an N52. Some have even pushed closer to 260 to the wheels, uh, which is definitely some pretty healthy power out of the N52 engine. And given the fact that it is a magnesium block, it is extremely lightweight. It's actually weighs less than the four cylinder boxer engine out of the Scion FRS, which is quite impressive. So given all those things, I mean, you're looking at some pretty heavy hefty performance figures coming out of that engine. And again, the tune is just gonna be optimizing AFRs, it's gonna be optimizing airflow, it's gonna be taking into account timing tables and just all kinds of things to ensure that you are producing more power on your engine. So regardless, 
all those modifications are gonna benefit you in one way or another. They really can't hurt your car in any type of way. And of course, if you want to unlock the potential of your N52, that is how you're gonna do it. Now, I hope this video did shed a lot of light and context into the situation surrounding the N52 platform and building more power on it. I know there's a lot of discussion around this topic and this engine really didn't receive a whole lot of attention in terms of aftermarket support and a lot of people just kind of went straight to the N54 but there are a lot of people out there driving these cars that really enjoy them so I think the N52 definitely deserves a video on its own uh, in regards to producing more power so again if you guys could please leave a thumbs up on this video subscribe to my YouTube channel down below if you have not done so already and of course thank you so much for watching please feel free to browse any of the other videos on my channel and I will catch you all in the next one take it easy my friends